Hello. So this one is actually probably one of the most requested ones that I had for what sort of stuff um, people want to know about streaming and specifically Mixer. So Firebot is a bot that I personally use, which I know a lot of people use as well, for managing your interactive. So you may have gone into a stream before, you see a load of buttons and stuff underneath the stream, you click them and it can do things like play sounds, pop up things on the stream, put commands in the chat. And um, you're probably like, how does that work? I don't really know. Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, in a short amount of time as possible, show you how that works. So. The first thing you got to do, let me switch over. The first thing you got to do is switch over to the right scene on uh, OBS. There we go. So on the Mixer website, you'll see I'm signed in at the top right. Make sure you sign in. Click on the little arrow where it says more. In here, you will see all the different options on Mixer. And the one that we want is called Developer Lab. This is basically what you use to build your interactive. So if I click onto that, it takes you into the Developer Lab right here. It looks very plain and appealing, lovely. At the top, you'll see Mix Play projects. Obviously, Interactive now has been renamed to Mix Play. You'll see the different projects that I've got in here. So you can see I've been messing about. Soundwave Interactive was one that I used a long time ago for just audio, which I'll probably cover in another video. The one that I'm doing at the moment, I've called Smiler Season 2 right here. So if I click on Edit, and what we want to go on to, this is where you can customize it all to be a proper project and put installation names. If you want to be a full-on developer and document all this stuff, which you can see, I really don't bother with that. Uh, you can ignore this bit. We want to go on to build right here. So, this right here is my interactive. And you may think, well, smile out, there's actually nothing there. Well, the reason that my buttons are blank is you can see above, these are all the buttons that appear on the start screen. What I do is, I'll go on it right now. You can see I don't have any text on there. I just put a space in there to keep it blank. I don't charge any sparks for it, so it doesn't show sparks either. I set a background image, which is an animated GIF, which if you say GIF, I apologize, but. It's GIF, it's spelled with a G, okay? But yeah, this is what I got, and this is really easy to build. This is really easy to build. Essentially, all you do, you click on the little plus up here. You've got different options, buttons, labels, joystick, text box. I always use buttons for mine. I don't really put text boxes or labels on there. You can if you want. If you want to put a row of buttons, put a little text label above that says what they are, do it, why not? You can use label right there. You do, you basically select what you want. Put a name in there and then click add. So say if we put um, Smilar's YouTube and then you click add and you see it appears down here. You click on the little arrow. If you want text in there, put text in there. If you don't want that, put a space in there. Simple as that. You can put how much sparks it costs to push that button. You can customize the size of the font. You can customize colors for text, for borders, for accent. Accent is basically like the water bit around the outside when you hover over it same like focus as well So basically yeah the color applied and focus in this the accent is applied to the cooldown spin of the progress bar So accent is like when you've clicked it focus is when you hover over it and you can choose all that as well Background color if you want the background color to not be the plain bluey color If you're a bit more technical and you've actually got pictures that you want on the back of the buttons You can put a URL in here a web address but what I do warn you is that make sure the picture size actually matches the button size, the scale of it and the resolution. Otherwise it will look squashed and stretched and it probably won't look right. So make sure you play about with that. Then all you do once you're happy. So if I do Smilar's YouTube right there, we can click the cross. And then you literally just drag it like this. You drag it on. You could put it like that. You could grab these bits on the edge. You can stretch it out. You could do stuff like that. If I don't want that button anymore. I can, I can just drop it in there and get rid of it. Simple as that. And you're probably wondering, well that's nice and everything, but how do I get that on my stream? So you need a program like Scorkbot or Mix It Up Bot or Firebot is what I use. So if I open that up right now, this is my Firebot. As you can see, I've signed in with my streamer account and my bot account. The bot account doesn't matter as much, it's more for that post commands in the chat. You can sign in of that. What this would do, it automatically synchronizes all of your boards from your account. You can add new boards. I've currently only just got the two that I was using before, the old one and the current one. And what this does, it shows all of your different scenes in here. It shows all the different buttons that you have added. And in Firebot, you basically program what those buttons do. And it's really easy. So Rick and Morty, that is a button that I've got which switches to my Rick and Morty board. Click on edit. And it's so easy to configure. You've got the cost of the button in Sparks, the cooldown. Permission, if you want to lock down who can actually press that button, if it's by none, everyone can press it. 
And then you've got effects. And the effects bit is the most important bit in Firebot. You click add new effect. Search for an effect. So for this specific button, I've got change scene because what it does is it moves it to a different board, which you can see above me the different scenes I've got. And those are basically different groups of buttons. Like I talked about in my stream deck, it can take you to different scenes, a different collection of buttons. Obviously, to start with, I'd probably say you don't need that, you only need one. You've got options like send a message in the chat. You can do things like um, play a sound, uh, show an image, show a video, show text on the screen. All these basically pop up and appear on the screen. The audio just plays in the background to your PC. You select these, so show an image. You can pick a file. You can choose where you want it to appear on the screen. How long it's on there, different animations for how it appears on the screen. And the size of it as well, it's as simple as that. So let's take you to, say, Smiler. We've got our JMitch button right there. What this does, it pops up a little thing at JMitch and plays music in the background. If we edit that button right there, you can see it's locked down to moderators, channel editors, staff, streamer. So basically me, my moderators, and also JMitch can press this button. What this does is it shows an image and it plays a sound. So it shows the little GIF and it plays a sound in the background. And it's as simple as that really. You basically build up a chain of events. I'll show you another example. I've got my try hard mode option, which a lot of people wonder how I do try hard mode. This is what it does right here. It plays a sound, so it plays that guy in the background going try hard mode, that thing. It changes the scene, so it moves you over to the try hard screen where there's less buttons on there, so you can't push them all. Um, it posts a message in the chat, and what that message does is it reduces my volume on my music. Uh, there's a slight delay, because it plays another sound as well. Um, it plays like a, like a boom sort of background sound. And then it shows an image at the top right, it shows that little try hard image up there. So it's a collection of different things. There's a there's like a music in the background and the guy saying try hard mode. Shows an image, turns down the music, disables the soundboard. That's all just a chain of events. And then what we've got on the try hard mode bit right here, we've got a disable option. What that does is it changes you back to the original scene, clears all of the effects, turns the music black back up, and then does a thing that says GG, plays the sound. It's as simple as that, it's just like a chain of events. But, what you want to do as well, to actually get all of these showing up on the screen, you need to add the overlay source. So, if you go into settings, and overlay, this option right here gets you a URL, which you add into OBS. So in OBS, or Streamlabs OBS, or XSplit, there's an option to add like a browser source, which is an address. Get the overlay path, it copies the path, paste that into OBS. And it means that any event that you trigger with Firebot, if you've got pictures and stuff, it pops up on the screen now. You may have to tweak about with the size and stuff. Um, that's that's not too bad to do. And then the last thing that you've got to do down here, hit this power button. This connects Firebot to your stream. So you can see Constellation, Interactive and Chat. Now when I go onto my stream, we'll see the board there. Let's do that right now. If we go to mixer.com forward slash smiler, we should see the interactive board. Probably not because I'm hosting Spawn right now, but there we go. And it's as simple as that. It is literally as simple as that. That is how you set up an interactive board basic on the Mixer website and then set it up in Firebot and link it to your stream. Obviously this was only like 8 minutes worth, there is a lot more that you could do, it is such a complicated thing. There's so much potential of it as well, so if you do have any questions about Firebot or interactive in general on Mixer, you can send me a message on Discord, Twitter, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram. Uh, you can post a comment down below, or you can go into my stream mixer.com forward slash smiler, post it in there as well. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all with some more Smilers secret streamer tips, whatever. I don't know what to call this in the next video, but thank you so much. Bye!